This here is wild mustard. It's part of a huge mustard family uh, that includes radishes, kales, um, arugulas, and all mustards are edible. A great way to identify mustards is by actually crushing up the leaf and smelling it, and it'll taste, it'll smell, uh, you know, like, like mustard, like the stuff that comes in a yellow jar. Now here, actually, I have kale that has gone to seed, and then I actually have the true mustard. And you can tell just by looking at the plant that they're very similar. So here's mustard that has smaller yellow flowers, and here's kale that has gone to seed bigger yellow flowers. The flowers both have four petals, and they grow in clusters uh, on both plants. The leaves of the mustard are much smaller and much tougher than the kale leaves. So next we have malva, or as it's also known as common mallow. Sometimes this plant is called cheeses. And this is actually a distant relative of okra. So if you're from the south, if you've been to the south, you know those long okra vegetables. They're kind of gelatinous, kind of slimy, but really good for the heart, has omega-3s in it. So this is gonna be a good plant uh, for the heart. It's a very delicious beginner wild edible. It doesn't have a strong chlorophyll taste. You could just eat it uh, without any kind of uh, adverse reaction or negative unpleasantries. What I like to do is find the bigger leaves and wrap avocado in the, the leaves and pour lemon juice over it and it makes a really delicious easy snack. Some identifying characteristics of this plant is that it's got these long reddish purple veins. It sprawls out along the ground. It, it grows in clusters. It also has white flowers with little purple stripes on it. And then it also has these button-like fruits. So it's like a, a little fruit with sepals, which means green petals on it. And it's super delicious. These are what's called cheeses, actually. And the reason they call these cheeses is because in the olden days, they used to use malva, particularly this, to make um, during the, in the cheese making process, it would help, the, the sliminess would help bind cheese. And you can also make marshmallows out of this, or as I like to call them, marshmallows. So this is called sheep sorrel right here. And sheep sorrel is really easy to identify because it has these long sword-like leaves. As you can see, it has a long leaf and two lobes that make it look like a a fish or a sword or a rocket. As it starts going to seed, it develops these reddish seeds that grow at the top of the plant. It's very lemony, sour to the taste. And that sour brings with it lots of uh, iron, which is good for people with anemia, with hepatitis, urinary tract infections. Sorrel is par part of the dock family, which is another plant we're gonna be talking about here. And all docks are really good for skin ailments. So whether you have a rash or some acne or a bug or bee sting, you can actually chew it up, eat it internally, or better yet, chew it up and actually apply it to where you got, where you got stung and the sting will be eradicated. In minutes, the pain will go away and so will the swelling. The seeds of sheep sorrel are very rich in omega-3s. They actually rival flax seeds in their omega-3 content, but it's very cumbersome and takes a lot of time to pick the seeds and shell them. So I just stick to eating the greens. However, sometimes when I make crackers, I just throw them in whole with the husks and then I can't even taste them and I'm getting my omega-3s that way. We have clovers. And again, there are many types of clovers. This is a giant red clover. All clovers are gonna have three leaves and the leaves are oval in shape. Now there's another plant that looks very similar to clover. It's called wood sorrel. Wood sorrel has a similar growing structure. However, it has three heart shaped leaves, whereas clover has three oval leaves. So. Look at your leaf patterns. If they have three heart-shaped leaves, they're wood sorrel, which is edible. Um, but if it's oval, it's clover. 
Another great identifying characteristic of clover is that it, it has serrated edges. So if you look very closely at the leaf, you'll see that it has serrations on it. And of course, the easiest way to identify clover is with the common flower that most of us have seen before. In fact, if you look on any lawn, pretty much, you will be able to find at least one clover leaf. So all parts are edible, the greens, the stems, uh, the flowers are sweet, delicious. I like to decorate pies and cakes with the flower. Clovers are really good blood purifiers, so they're especially good for people that are suffering from cancer, tumors, any kind of cysts or blood disorders. However, everybody can eat them and gain benefit from them. So those are clovers. And we also have plantain, which is another miracle plant. Uh, we have two types of plantain. We have the broadleaf plantain, and we have the narrow or lance leaf plantain. So this just shows how different two plants in the same family can look. All plantains are going to have very well-defined veins on the bottoms. They're also going to have threads that come out of the, the stems. So whether it's, it's long leaf plantain or broad leaf plantain, you can see there's some similarities. Now plantain also has these long stalks that carry the seeds. And you can see they kind of look different. Long narrow leaf plantain has seeds that look like this, whereas broad leaf plantain has seeds that kind of look like baby corn. All parts are edible, they're high in protein. Broadleaf plantain seeds actually taste like baby corn, so you can marinate it or use it as a pot herb or boil it, and, you know, make soup out of it, or eat it raw and it, it tastes quite nice. Plantain also has a lot of husks because of the amount of seeds that it has, and those husks are collected and uh, processed and made into psyllium. So if you've ever wondered what psyllium husk is, it's actually from a, a plantain plant. One of the best applications for plantain, however, is to apply it topically on the skin. So if you ever get stung by a bee, you literally just chew up the plant, spit it into your hand, and apply it on. The sting will subside in five minutes after applying the plantain poultice. The pain will go away, and 30 minutes after that point, you won't even be able to see where the bee stung you. As a little cautionary note, from experience, I've learned that narrow leaf plantain isn't such a good food source. It's much more concentrated, and there's the tendency to throw it back up if you eat too much of it. Whereas plantain that has broad leaves is completely edible, it's uh, totally delicious, and, and so if you're gonna eat it, eat the broad leaf. If you're gonna put it on skin, you can use both.